Hi, I'm Roy Williams, a senior consultant with Red Hat. Today I'm joined by my colleague, Chris Malifus, and we're going to be discussing integration options with Active Directory. Hey, Roy, so both you and I have been involved in some engagements in with Active Directory and Red Hat Identity Manager integration, also called IDM. One of the main reasons that we're going to use this is to leverage users and groups from AD. But what are some of the challenges or questions that you've gotten from some clients? A lot of the clients I've worked with are concerned about where their users live. They're also concerned about what a trust is and what it takes to set this trust up. Yeah, so typically we have a few options. There's direct integration, synchronization, and indirect integration. These options allow your IDM admins to focus more on the other features of IDM and not just user and group management. Exactly right, Chris. So. The first option we have uh, that a lot of our smaller customers like is this direct integration where our rail servers go directly to Active Directory. This is really simple for them because they don't have additional infrastructure to manage. Uh, a lot of our larger customers though use two other methods, uh, one of which is an AD sync where we synchronize the users from Active Directory over to IDM, but we found that this doesn't scale very well. So we have the trust option where we build IDM infrastructure and establish a trust with the Active Directory domain. Um, and then that allows our admins to focus more on managing policy instead of users. So that's things like host base access control rules, sudo policies, and managing things like SSH keys. So what are the requirements to get started with an IDM trust to AD? Yeah, so thankfully on new versions of IDM, the process is actually pretty straightforward. So there are some scripts that are initially run on an IDM server, and once those scripts are run to configure that trust, the IDM server becomes what's known as a trust controller. Now, outside of the scripts to set up the trust, the, there are some DNS records that must be added on both AD and IDM, and there's also some firewall rules that have to take place. One key requirement to note, though, is that AD and IDM must be in separate domains. So here you see we have IDM.EX.com, and AD is in AD.EX.com. If both IDM and AD live in the same domain, this trust is not configurable. Great. So let's assume that we already have this trust established. What are our next steps? So the next step is going to be to create some failover here. So we're going to add another server into the fold, into the trust. And we're going to call that, that's called a trust agent. And then we want to start defining our, our user and group mappings. So we have a external AD group, which is defined first, which then references these AD groups that previously exist. And then we also have the internal IDM POSIX groups which reference this external group, and then this POSIX group is where we actually apply the, the policies and, and permissions to, to manage the users. Okay, so you mentioned trust controllers and trust agents. Can you elaborate on what those are? Sure, so the trust controller is responsible for actually maintaining the trust between the two realms, and trust agents can only leverage that trust, and as part of that, they can perform authentication lookups against Active Directory. Okay, great. Would you care to uh, walk us through an authentication process? Yeah, so if I'm a user trying to authenticate to this rel server here, I'm going to assume that my rel server is joined into my IDM domain, and then the IDM server contacts the one of the domain controllers in AD, since that's where the user actually lives, and AD will send back a Kerberos ticket back to IDM, and then the user is then able to authenticate as if they were uh, here. One thing to note is that those credentials can be cached in IDM, um, and that is also a configurable setting. Great. So what should customers do if they uh, want to find out more information or they need help getting started? Yeah, so please get in touch with your local Red Hat account executive and visit redhat.com services to learn more about our consulting and training options.